Is it possible to print fast on the under tree without sacrificing print quality? Absolutely. With Clipper on its amazing input shaping, speeds and accelerations that are unsinkable with other firmware are now achievable. In today's episode, I show you how to install and configure Clipper on the under tree with input shaping and pressure advance. Let's get started. It normally takes about 30 minutes to print this calibration cube with the ender tree. With Clipper, this time is reduced to less than 7 minutes. A 3D Binchy requires around 2 hours to print with the ender tree. Clipper can print it in only 28 minutes, with no loss in quality. The easiest way to get started with Clipper is to use a Raspberry Pi image, like Mainsail OS or Fluid Pi. Download Fluid Pi from GitHub. Write the image on an SD card using Raspberry Pi Imager. Before clicking on Write, press Ctrl plus Shift plus X to configure advanced options. Insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and turn it on. Connect to the Raspberry Pi web interface using the hostname you set when you wrote the image. This gives you access to the free web interface for Clipper. Don't worry about the unable to open config file error message. We will fix this shortly. To compile the microcontroller code for the 3D printer mainboard, connect to the Raspberry Pi with SSH. Open the Clipper firmware configuration tool. Select STM32 for the microcontroller architecture. STM32F103 for the processor model, a 28 kilobyte bootloader, and the serial communication interface. These are the valid settings for the Creality V4.2.2 or V4.27 mainboards. Now exit, save the configuration and compile the firmware. This creates a clipper.bin file in the clipper slash out directory. Copy this file to an SD card using SCP and give it a unique name. Insert the SD card into the printer and turn it on to flash the firmware. Now connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer using a micro USB B to USB cable. The next step is to create a printer configuration file. As a starting point, I'm using the examples that come with Clipper for the Creality 4.2.7 mainboard. I copy and paste this configuration into a printer.cfg file. Save and restart the firmware. There are a couple of fluid warnings. Indeed, fluid requires certain settings to be defined in the configuration file. I copy and paste them from the fluid documentation. Save and restart the firmware. OK, all fluid warnings are gone. Now let's configure a BL touch by adding a BL touch section to the configuration file. I also define a save the home section to home towards the center of the print area. To use a probe in place of the Z end stop, I set the stepper Z end stop pin to probe the virtual end stop. In order to keep using the LCD display of my Ender Tree Pro with Clipper, I add a display section. To make configuration changes in Clipper, I just need to update printer.cfg and restart the firmware. Let's try to home the printer. So far, so good. Now I configure auto bed leveling by adding a bed mesh section to the config file. I also add a G29 macro to emulate Marlin G29 G code, which is not available in Clipper. To perform auto bed leveling, I issue a G29 command in the console. Fluid provides a graphical tool to visualize the result of the bed mesh leveling. We will configure input shaping and pressure advance in a short moment. Before that, I want to mount the Raspberry Pi to the printer and power it directly from the Ender Tree power supply. This is optional, but results in a cleaner and more organized setup. I printed this Raspberry Pi enclosure, which mounts the Raspberry Pi to the Ender Tree's extruded aluminum rails. In order to power the Raspberry Pi directly from the Ender Tree power supply, I use an XT60 Y splitter cable and reduce the voltage to 5 volts with an LM2596 buck converter. 
Finally, I connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer with a micro USB B to USB cable. Optionally, you can use a Raspberry Pi camera to remotely monitor the printer from the web interface. For the camera to work, it must be enabled in Raspi config. Ok, now let's take a look at Clipper's most awesome feature, input shaping. Using an ADXL345 accelerometer connected to the Raspberry Pi, we will measure the resonance frequencies of the printer. Knowing the resonance frequencies allows Clipper to control the print head in such a way that it cancels its own vibrations. We need to do some additional setup on the Pi first, in order to perform this test. I am just following the steps from the Clipper documentation. This completes the configuration. Let's check if we can read some data from the accelerometer. Yes, it works. I start the resonance test on the x-axis by mounting the accelerometer on the print head. The test shakes the print head along the x-axis and measure printer vibration amplitude as function of frequency. To perform the resonance test on the y-axis, I mount the accelerometer on the bed. To post-process the accelerometer data and compute the optimal input shaping parameters, I run the Calibrate Shaper Python script as per the documentation. This script generates two plots, one for X and one for Y, and makes recommendations about which input shaper settings to use. All I have to do to enable input shaping is to add an input shaper section to the printer configuration file and cut and paste the recommended settings. Let's compare the print quality with and without input shaping by printing a test model. The result is impressive. Input shaping almost completely eliminates ringing, even when using acceleration as high as 7000 mm per square second. The next step is to tune Pressure Advance. Pressure Advance does two useful things. It reduces ooze during non-extrude moves and it reduces blobbing during cornering. Tuning Pressure Advance is done by printing a test model. The tuning tower command instructs Clipper to increase the pressure advance value by 0.005 per millimeter of Z8. Inspect the print and then use a caliper to find the height that has the best quality corners. Compute the pressure advance value as the measured height by 0.005. Add the pressure advance value in the extruder section. In my case, the pressure advance was too high. I reduced the value to 0.04 and got much better print quality. What do you think about Clipper on the Ender tree? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you soon on new Mac Tech.